Good morning, good morning, everyone. We are having a little bit of some technical difficulties with our internet. And if there is some problems there, we apologize ahead of time. Let's just spend time in his presence. Amen. If you can like the stream, share this with a friend and let's spend time in the presence of the Lord together. Amen. Let's worship him. Be your prayer, fresh fire. Fresh fire. Cause death could not hold you. You feel totally before you. You silence the bones of sin and rain. The heavens are
We give you glory. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless His name. Proclaim His name, the good news of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His wonders among the peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord is has made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, and the strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the people. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord glory, do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Hallelujah. go of all the clutter in your life and just worship His presence. Make it about Him, the simplicity of His Spirit.
bless his holy and name. Some of you are trying too hard to get into the presence of the Lord. Some of you are trying too, too hard. You're trying to muster a feeling. You're trying to push your way into God's presence. And the word for you is just be. Be still. Know that He is God. Sit in His presence. You're in His presence now. Just be. Minister to Him, and He will minister to you. We make it so hard sometimes. We beat ourselves up if we don't feel the presence of the Lord. Sit and just be with your Heavenly Father. Just be in this moment. Enjoy this moment now with Him. Give Him thanks. Give Him praise. It's yours, it's yours. 
You know. It's kind of like this. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I, I need to release this. But it's kind of like this. If you ever take out meat from the freezer, it's hardened. And the way you thaw it is it goes under the fountain. You turn on the water fountain. You turn on the sink, the water that comes down, and you just allow that water just to sit on it. The meat doesn't need to do anything to thaw. Sometimes our hearts can grow hardened, yeah, cold. Right here. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The Holy Spirit is here. Thank you, Lord. And sometimes you just need to sit. You don't need to do anything. Just sit with the Lord. And his spirit, his presence begins to soften you again. You want to grow in sensitivity? Learn to do that. Learn to be still. Don't look for a feeling. Just be with the Lord. I really believe that the presence of the Lord is here to heal you. And those watching online across the world, go ahead and be healed in your bodies in Jesus' name.
saints and angels one and all they bow in reverence at your feet every creature great and small saints and angels one be still. He's with you. Be still. Be still and know that he is. Now 
in the stillness there's refreshing learn to be still in the stillness the spirit is stirred Some of you feel like your relationship with the Lord has been robotic, mechanical. And the way to break through that is to wait on Him. Wait before the Lord. He's the one that sustains us. Waiting upon the Lord forces you to realize you are waiting for a person. In other words, you're waiting on someone. He's not a force. He's not a thing. He is a personality. And he wants to breathe into you and refresh you and renew you. But you have to wait before his presence. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. no striving in his presence just be he'll take care of the work you rest rest in him
Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength wait on him they shall mount up with wings as of eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint
Some of you are on learning prayer and learning it in a different way. That prayer is simply being with the Lord, spending time in His presence. Jesus said in His Word, we ask, we seek, and we knock. Asking leads to seeking. Seeking leads to knocking. And when the door is open, there is fellowship. This is what He wants. He wants intentional fellowship, intentional communion, the sharing, the exchange of hearts and thoughts and minds through His Spirit, by His Word, a sweet exchange. Waiting, being renewed, being revived, being restored. Come under the waterfall of His presence. Sit and be still with Him. He gives renewal of strength. He causes you to mount up like eagles. He causes you to run and not be weary. Everything in his, is in His presence.
honor and majesty are in your presence. We were made to commune with you. Oh, how we worship you. Omega. You are the first and the last. You're the sustainer of all things. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. You are our great high priest who stands to make intercession for your people. You are the bright morning star. You are the spotless lamb of God. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the great shepherd. You are the physician of our soul. You are the anointed son of man. You are the anointed blessed son of the living God. You are true. You are faithful. living one, the uncreated one. You worked in my past. You are working in the present. You are meeting us in the future. Omnipresent. Omnipotent. Majestic is your name, holy is your name. wisdom and power and you are hidden all treasures you are the perfect image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation desire of the nations. You are the kinsman redeemer. eternal name forever. Blessed be your eternal name. You are mighty. You are holy. You are pure and true.
minister to him. Tell him how much you love him. the ocean of his love, wells of love.
lift your hands to Him. Worship Him. honor, we give you praise. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 says, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot, so then, because you are lukewarm 
and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say I am rich, and have become wealthy, and have need of nothing. You do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Also I overcame and as I sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. That's what we're going to read today. And I want to talk to you concerning this scripture. Amen. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Let's look at it. Let's look at it together. Amen. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe to our channel, I encourage you to do so. Hit the bell button, hit all notifications so that every time we go live, you'll be the first to be notified. Amen. We stream every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Friday at 7 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. We try to do that every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Sometimes we stream a little bit later than usual, like today we streamed at 7.30, but today uh, we usually do it for 7 a.m., okay? And I want us to look at Revelation chapter 3 together, and I want us to look at verses 14 onward, and I want to ask you a question. This question may apply to you. Or maybe this question doesn't apply to you. Maybe it applies to someone else that you know. But the question that I have for you today is this. Is there lukewarmness in your life? I'll say it again. Is there lukewarmness in your life? Now, what does that mean? Lukewarm, tepid. It means... Are you, have you ever had a drink, maybe a coffee or something warm, and it's like, it's cold and hot at the same time? Doesn't that feel really weird in your mouth? It's like, ugh, it's almost like you want to spit it out. That's what lukewarm is. It's hot and cold. It's, it's neither. It's indecisive. It's neither cold nor hot. And Jesus was giving this in, uh, incredible word of prophecy to John the Revelator in the book of Revelations. And I want to break this down for you today so that you can so that we can all reflect on it. And I want to show you some things that maybe you've never seen before. But Jesus is a master communicator. In other words, Jesus is a powerful teacher. 
Jesus relates spiritual things to natural things. He does this all the time with his parables, with the way that he describes the kingdom of heaven. And he does so with the church of the Laodiceans in the book of Revelation. And I'll explain to you why I'm saying all that in just a moment. This is what he writes. And we're going to read verses 14, just verse by verse, verse by verse. He says, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? Let's stop there. We're going to break this down verse by verse. We're going to chew on this here a little, there a little, so that we're all able to just contemplate it, meditate on it together. Who is he writing to? To the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. Who are the Laodiceans? It was the church of Laodicea. It was a sister church to the church of Colossae. If you read into the New Testament, you will read there is a letter that Paul wrote called to the uh, to the the letter to the Colossians. Colossians is a powerful book, and I encourage you to read the book of Colossians. I encourage you to read that often. One of the most powerful revelations that we get concerning the things related to Christ is in the letter to the church of Colossae, to the letter of Colossians. And Laodicea and Colossae were sister churches. They were related, okay? And in, the reason why I'm saying that is because in, in the church of Colossae, in the letter of Colossae, you see you see how uh, it relates to the church of Laodicea, okay? And this is how Jesus speaks to this lukewarm church. He speaks to them by addressing himself as the amen and the faithful true witness. Every single church, there are seven churches that are, that are found in the book of Revelations. And those are seven different types of churches and seven different spiritual conditions of churches. And what we see here is that Jesus introduces himself as the amen, as the faithful and true witness. Why is he saying that? Because Jesus is the one that knows the heart. He is the faithful, true witness. He's faithful and true. And not only that, he witnesses the reality of our lives. Then he says, the beginning of the creation of God. He's trying to get the church of Laodicea to see that he is the amen. He is the faithful, true witness. He is the beginning of the creation of God. He is supreme. He's trying to get the church, the lukewarm church of Laodicea, to see who he truly is. If there is lukewarmness in your life, you need a fresh revelation of who Jesus truly is. The Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, has to remind you, has to cause you to see who he truly is. Lukewarmness is being stagnant. It's being apathetic to the things of God. And in order for you to get past through lukewarmness, you've got to see him clearly. Look at what verse 15 says. I know your works. That you are neither hot, neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Now, what is he speaking? Remember how I told you that Jesus is a master communicator? Remember how I told you that Jesus often would communicate things and he would use natural things to convey spiritual things? I just said that earlier a few moments ago. Why is this important for us to understand? Well, in the city of Colossae and Laodicea, there were two springs. One was a very hot spring of water. It was a thermo uh, water. Actually, thermo means healing, 
wholeness. And in this uh, province of Asia Minor, there were two springs. There was a hot spring that bubbled over hot steaming water where people would go into that water and they would receive uh, healing in their circulation. They would they just take these hot baths. It was therapeutic for them in that culture. And then there was also cold springs, cold, refreshing water that people would drink from. And they had in the Roman province, they had this pipe system that what would happen is the hot water and the cold water would run through and it would create a uh, uh, an unpleasant taste to the people of the church of the Laodiceans. And you couldn't tell what kind of water it was because it was neither hot nor cold. And culturally, that was what was happening in that city, but prophetically, it was a sign of the condition of that church. It was neither hot that brought healing, neither cold refreshing. And he says, verse 16, so then because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich. What causes lukewarmness? Jesus tells us right here. It's the security of riches. It's the security of your own resources. You no longer look to God as your sustainer, as your provider, and the root of it is you've lost your dependency upon the Spirit of God. Lukewarmness is apathy. It is spiritual lethargy. It is a spiritual condition that causes indifference. You're no longer burning bright hot like you used to, or you're no longer refreshing for others to drink from your life because you think that you've arrived. Because you've become wealthy, you have no need of anything. And when we do that, what ends up happening is that we start compromising our spiritual well-being. Is there anything wrong with being wealthy? No. Is there anything wrong with having financial security in our lives? Absolutely not. But what ends up being a issue is when we depend on our own resources, when we draw from our own wells of fountains of provision that we no longer think we need the Lord in our lives. The, 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 the bedrock of the issue is idolatry. And idolatry isn't always worshiping a statue or some image. But sometimes idolatry can look like worshiping our own security, our own resources, our own achievements. This creates lukewarmness. It takes our eyes off of the Lord and places it on our own resources, on our own things. And what happens, it creates indifference. Because you say, I'm rich. I've become wealthy. I have no need of nothing. Nothing at all. A person that views their life this way, I don't need anything. I have no need of anything. I no longer need God to, to help me. You, what you do is you short circuit yourself and you start little by little entering into deception. He says in verse 17, you do not know that you are wretched miserable, poor, blind, naked. Deception is deception when you think your reality is true. 
your reality is based upon your own perceptions and not God's perceptions. That is what deception is. Deception is believing something that is untrue and taking that as your reality. I don't need anything. I have need of nothing. And Jesus says, but you don't realize that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. God sees things in in different perceptions than we do. Sometimes when we think we have the security of everything, when we no longer depend on the Lord to sustain us, we think we're okay. But in reality, God sees our condition as wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. The kingdom of God is not like the kingdom of the world. In the kingdom of God, the first will be last. The last will be first. The greatest is the servant. The more mature in the kingdom, the more childlike they are. It is so different from this world. Those who feel secure in their resources are actually wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked because they are no longer siphoning the treasure who is Christ. So what do you do if you find yourself in this predicament? John the Revelator, the same man that wrote the book of Revelation, is the same apostle that wrote in First John, concerning the things of the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the of the eyes, and the pride of life are, are, are not from the are not from the Lord. The lust of the flesh is very easy to discern. It's your bodily appetites that are unbridled apart from God's presence. The lust of the eyes are easy to discern because it is the things that you're looking at that promote lust and perversion. But the pride of life is something that often we don't talk about. And the pride of life was the sin that the Laodiceans were charged with. The pride of life is the security of their own resources, their dependency upon themselves, Apart from Christ, that is the pride of life. It is the security of your own resources. You feel like you no longer need God. You feel like you no longer need him because you have material things. Not realizing that in the spiritual There is a wretchedness, a misery, a poverty, a blindness, and a nakedness that veils the soul. So what are we to do? Maybe you're in this condition right now. It reminds me of a story, uh, this cartoon, The uh, The Emperor's New Clothes, where someone tells the emperor that he's he's wearing this majestic thing and really he's naked. And because he believes this deception from this peasant that tells him you're wearing these beautiful clothes, he's prancing around thinking that he has everything, not realizing that in the eyes of the people, he's actually naked and and looks silly. That is what spiritual pride and spiritual egotism does. We think we have our lives together when in reality, in the eyes of God, we're actually falling tremendously short. So what are we to do? Maybe you're in this condition now, or maybe you know someone in this condition. What are we to do? Well, the good news is you don't have to stay in that condition. The good news 
is you no longer have to be in that predicament. Maybe you're getting convicted in your heart right now. Maybe God is showing you through the word and by the spirit areas that you need to adjust and repent in. Don't don't be condemned. He loves you. He's trying to grab your attention. So what are we to do? Well, let's look. Let's look at what he's telling us to do. He says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. So what is he saying here? What is the predicament? How can we come out of lukewarmness? How can we leave spiritual apathy? First and foremost, he is telling them, I counsel you to buy from me the gold refined by the fire. In other words, he's telling them what he told the church of Colossae some 30, 40 years ago when Paul the Apostle wrote in, in his letter to the Colossians that in Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So the answer to defeating lukewarmness is to come near to Christ to receive from him. What's wonderful about him, he says, I encourage you to buy gold refined in the fire. It reminds me of Isaiah 55. He says, come buy and eat without money and without cost. When we buy from Christ, it's without cost. Why? Because he purchased the price already. So the counsel that Christ gives us in verse 18 of Revelation chapter 3 is to see him as treasure, to see him as your all. What is he saying? Buy gold from me refined in the fire. My gold is pure. Buy from me what is pure and what is truly valuable and costly. He's saying, come to me. Stop looking at yourself and look at me as the priceless treasure. Look at me as your all-sufficient treasure. You want to step out of lukewarmness? You need to value Christ. And not only this gold, he says, buy from me gold. He says, refined in the fire. It's pure. It's not gold that fades away. It is eternal gold. It's refined by fire it is pure that you may be rich true riches are spiritual riches the true riches from above is to be satisfied with the fullness and the abundance of the life of Christ and the believer Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you may have life and life more in abundance. Jesus wants to richly bless you with his life on the inside of you. This word life in John chapter 10 is the word zoe. It's where we get the word zoe. Or Zoe. It's the life of God. 
It is the, the, the life that flows from God himself. The reality is that Christ wants to give you his life on the inside of you to the overflow, to the abundance. Most people live from the outside in. They live from the dictates outside in, not realizing that the way of the kingdom is not experienced from the outside in, but from the inside out. Your circumstance is circumstantial, but your eternal life on the inside is eternal. And if on the inside of you, you prioritize the prize of knowing the Lord in your life, your circumstance will no longer dictate and decide what is true in your life. Because you have an eternal riches you have an eternal richness. You have an abundance of life flowing from the inside of you, an un unshakable peace, an unshakable faith, unspeakable joy, and you have the eternity on the inside of you. The reality is our lives come and go. What is 70, 80, 90 years on earth compared to the vastness, endless eternity? The things of this earth are temporal. Paul gives us these words in 1 Corinthians where he says that, uh, excuse me, in Romans, he says in Romans 8, his, there are the sufferings of this world are not worthy to com be compared to the glory which will be revealed in us. These things come and go, they're temporal, but what is eternal lasts forever. It is unseen. And so many times we bank, we place our deposits on the temporary. We never bank and put deposits on the unseen. In, in God's perspective, the unseen, the secret, and the eternal is what is important. The world's perspective is seen, temporary, and short-lived. That is not the perspective of the believer. And what is Jesus telling us? I counsel you to buy gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. That's what he's saying. And he says, and white garments that you may be clothed and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. What is he saying? He's saying, not only am I the gold refined by the fire, but I am the very clothing that you put on. The scripture tells us to clothe ourselves with Christ. To clothe ourselves with humility. And it's interesting because during these times, oftentimes, during the times of the Roman uh, era, the way that you would put on garments or clothing, it was made out of one piece. There wasn't like shirts and pants. It was one piece. And the way that you would do it is you would lift your hands and someone else would help you put your clothing on. It was a process. And in the same way, that's what we do. We put on Christ by surrendering and lifting our hands and allowing the Holy Spirit to clothe us with his very nature. He's saying, not only am I the gold refined in the fire, but I am the very clothing that you are to put on, that your nakedness may not be revealed. The shame would be covered. And then he says, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. The Laodiceans, the city of Laodicea, was known historically for its eye salve. 
And it was a type of, um, it was a type, an eye salve was something that they would put on during these ancient times. And it was made often of oil, hardened oil, and they would put it over their eyes so that they can see clearly. And it's interesting because eye salve was made out of olive oil. It was hardened. It was it was mixed with other things, but the base was oil. And they would put this over their eyes. They didn't have glasses back then, but it would help them to see a little clearer. And the church of, uh, excuse me, the city of Laodicea was an exporter of eye salve. And what Jesus is saying is he's saying, my very anointing will help you see me clearly. What Jesus is saying is, anoint your eyes with me. Anoint your eyes with the oil that I give you. Anoint your perceptions with my presence that you may see. Anoint your eyes with my eye salve. It reminds me of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. We with unveiled face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are being transformed by the same image that we are beholding. It is a spiritual beholding. It is a spiritual seeing of Christ. He says, anoint your eyes. I love it. Anoint. What is, who is Christ but the anointed one? Jesus is the gold refined by the fire. He is the treasure. Jesus is our clothing. He is who we put on. And Jesus is the very salve that we apply to our spiritual sight so that we may see. Just as a man or a woman needs a pair of eyes, to directly engage in this world properly. We need spiritual eyes to perceive God's presence and God's truth so that we're able to see clearly and and be directed clearly. He wants to give you a spirit of revelation. He wants you to see. And look what he says here. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. The scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews, don't be discouraged when you are rebuked by the Lord because God is dealing with you as a true daughter, as a true son. If you are rebuked by the Lord, rejoice and be encouraged because he is dealing with you as a as his very child. I have children of my own. Many times I have to rebuke them. Many times I have to call them out. Many times I have to tell them when they're being manipulative or when they're trying to get their way and they're being self-centered or if they're not following instructions. Why? Because my desire for them is that they would grow as mature children and as productive members of society. My children. It's the same with the Lord. The Lord wants us to be reared correctly. He wants us to cultivate maturity and become sons and daughters productive in the society called the kingdom of God. He wants us 
to be mature. And then he says, therefore, be zealous and repent. Therefore, be zealous and repent. This word zealous, it's a wonderful word. It means to have the warmth or the feeling for again, to burn with passion, to have desire, to move in feeling. It's a holy passion to come to warmth again. It reminds me of a, a scripture where one of the ways that when King David died, they took someone, they, 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 they took a servant and they, he laid on top, she laid on top of him to see if the warmth would be transferred, but he was dead. And that's how they were able to tell he was not alive. Or it reminds me of the story of Elijah. It's either Elijah or, Eli or Elisha, one of them. There's a child that has died. And Elijah gets on top of the child and puts his warmth on him and he comes to life. That is what revival is. It's when the Lord covers you with himself and causes his warmth to enter into the deadness of your life so that you burn with zeal again. He wants you to have fresh passion for him. He says, be zealous and repent. Now notice the order. He doesn't say repent and be zealous. He says, be zealous and repent. That goes to show you that the warmth of zeal, the passion of zeal must come to the heart so that you are properly able to repent. For repentance comes from God. You cannot repent without the gift that he graces you to repent. Let me give you an example of this. How many times, how many times have you had a moment with the Lord where all of a sudden you're just overwhelmed with his goodness? You're overwhelmed with his, this, the, his love. And all of a sudden you find yourself on the floor saying, I'm willing to let everything go. I'm willing to let go of everything because I love you so much. Have you ever been there? Or maybe there was a struggle and all of a sudden you found yourself where you were worshiping the Lord and you were overtaken and you just said, God, I'm so sorry for making it the things that I used to make this. I'm so sorry. I repent. Why? Because the warmth of God's zeal is burning your heart and he's giving you clarity and great perspective so that you can turn away from that which is evil. It reminds me of this. It reminds me of what Jesus told us the kingdom of God was like. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is like a merchant who sold everything that he had to buy a field that, that had treasure hidden in it. In other words, Jesus gives us this parable of the kingdom of God where a man hid this treasure. There was hidden treasure in a field and the man sold everything that he had to buy that field. That is what repentance looks like. It looks like the, the reason why that man was able to let go of everything that he owned and had was because he saw how costly, how treasured and valuable the treasure of the field was. He was able to say, you know what? I am willing to let go of all of my cares, all of my resources, all of the things that I'm in need of because I found something so much better. And he was able to turn from everything and sold everything that he had for that field. That's what it means. Be zealous and repent. See how lovely I am. 
See how true I am. Look at how good and kind and forbearing God is. And look at how lovely the Lord truly is. Let go of everything and just find him. You see? That's what it means. Be zealous and repent. See how truly wonderful he is. This is what it means. Are you struggling with being lukewarm? Is there spiritual apathy in your life? Do you find complacency creeping in the crack of your heart? Do you feel discouraged, despondent? Do you feel tired and just in the motions of spiritual life? then friend, I would tell you, I would encourage you to rightly see the Lord. Amen. Let me just pray with you. And a couple of announcements, very, very, very important announcements. Nobody leave just yet. Let me just pray. Father, I pray for everyone right now that you would anoint our eyes to see you. You would clothe us with Christ, that we would see you as the endless treasure from above, gold refined by the fire pure. Help us to let go of lukewarmness. Excuse me. Help us to burn with zeal. Help us to be refreshing. Not stuck in the middle of undecisiveness, spiritual apathy. Help us, Lord to burn hot for you. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Listen, please do me a favor. Like this stream. There's about 1,414 of you watching right now. If you can all like this stream, this will help us tremendously with the engagement of the stream. Also, I want to say this. Some of you have been asking, how can we partner? How can we partner with the ministry? It's very simple. Text GLORY to 801801 if you live in the United States and or Canada. Also tomorrow, we are having a Zoom meeting for all of our monthly ministry partners. I want to let you know on a few things that are very important. I always let the partners know ahead of time. And um, that's going to take place tomorrow. There was an email that was already sent out. And so you should uh, see that very soon. Also, very, very important. It is not too late. It is not too late to register for our free event. It's not going to be live stream. It's going to take place at the Wyndham Hotel in Fort Smith, Arkansas, Friday night, Saturday morning and Saturday night and Sunday morning. Come expectant. Register for the Fresh Oil Outpouring event. It is free. All right. And um, it's all listed um, uh, on the stream. OK, you can also go to fathersglory.org. You could check out our events. OK, we have so far almost a thousand people that are going to be joining. All right. Um, there was one more thing I was going to say. This was very, very, very important. Oh, um. Tomorrow, um, what's today? No, Wednesday, we have um, Jackie Baker, who's going to be leading worship on the stream with us. So it's going to be a great time. We're going to talk about worship. It's going to be an awesome time in God's presence. Um, Yes, and there was one other thing. I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry, guys, I... Uh, Totally forgot. But let me just say this real quick. Please consider, pray about becoming a monthly partner with the ministry of Father's Glory. It takes tens of thousands of dollars to do these events. And, and if I were to tell you how much it cost to do the event and to do this in the Wyndham Hotel and to get all the seating and get all the sound and get all the, uh, the, the media techs, it was very expensive. We are able to only do this through our monthly ministry partners. We are working on an e-course that is taking place 
very soon sometime in the in the in in this upcoming year that costs several thousand dollars our ebooks cost several hundred dollars to publish please 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 understand that we cannot do this without you we have a media team i have a personal assistant we have all of this and and they are being supported by you the monthly partners would you consider would you pray about becoming a monthly ministry partner for those who have partnered with our ministry we want to say thank you so so very much for partnering with us please be in agreement with us we are believing the lord to completely have this ministry a hundred percent fully crowdfunded so we're able to be a blessing to the rest of the body of christ so that we're not financially burdening any anyone we want to have free events, free e-courses, free e-books. We want to do it 100% free because freely we receive, freely give. Help us to do that by partnering with us now. Amen? Would you pray about that? Here's how you can give. Again, text GLORY to the number 801801. All of your proceeds are completely tax deductible. They're it is it is um and and it goes into the ministry of father's glory also we also support missionaries we also support missions we were at chiapas mexico where we were able to plant a church with the help of a of a ministry partner um we were able to uh we've been to honduras chiapas mexico and we plan to do fresh oil events internationally we want to do that. We want to do a fresh oil event in Brazil. We want to do a fresh oil event in Mexico. We want to do a fresh we want to do gospel crusades all over the world. We cannot do that though without your monthly support. So I encourage you to partner with us. Very important information will be given during the Zoom call tomorrow for those partners who will be attending the event, okay? We will see you um partners tomorrow. If you haven't received your email, you can simply email info at fathersglory.org. Okay. Someone said, can we partner if we're outside of the United States and Canada? Yes. You can partner online by visiting fathersglory.org forward slash donate. Okay. All right, guys. Love you all. And we will see you Wednesday. All right. And then after that, very important announcement that I have to share on Wednesday. So you don't want to miss that. Amen. God bless you. God increase you. And may the Lord's face shine on you in Jesus name. Love you all. See you Wednesday in Jesus name and see you all at Fresh Oil in person in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Blessings.